What's up YouTube, it's your boy Jerome Parker aka Master Shake and before we get started I would like to remind everyone to tap that notification bell if you're subscribed and if you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button and also smash that like button so that YouTube recommends this video to other viewers. So today I have written a quick little progressive web app that uses the screen record API in the web to make a screen recording app. So basically how it'll work is it'll record the screen. When you stop recording, it'll save the file as a WebM, uh, WebM video, and it'll give you the file. So this is perfect for if you need to do a demonstration for a client, for an application, um, or some any sort of how-to. So I'm going to go ahead and show you an example, and then we're going to get into the code. So you hit start record, it opens up to share your screen, you share, go around, yada, 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 do your thing, ABC123, cool, 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 and then we come back and we hit stop sharing. Boom, it saves the video as a WebM and then we get a notification. If we click on the WebM, which you can open up in any browser or you can use VLC, and then we will see the video that we just created. So simple enough, let's go back and look at the code. So this is written in Vue.js and it actually has no dependencies. We're just using the methods that are given to us with the HTML5 web standard. So I created an application called Screen Recorder using the ViewCreate uh, CLI method. And let's go to our app.view. Go ahead and get rid of this. Go ahead, get rid of this. So here we have app.view, and I have my logo. I have some text describing basically what the app does. Record your screen, save it as a file, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then I have two buttons. One that says start recording, and one that says stop recording. And which one that shows is depending on if recording is going on, which is a data event, a data the uh, value that we have set in our code so if we go down we have our data we have our is recording which is a boolean set to uh, initially set to false so it'll show start recording by default we have our options for our that they're going passed into the video so we want a mime type of webm and we're going to use the vp9 codec the display options for our uh, screen capture for the video we always want to show the cursor and for audio we want to have echo cancellation and noise suppression with a sample rate of 44 100 we have our media recorder object that we have as empty object we have our stream that we set as an empty object and we have our recorded chunks which is going to be an array of our data our, our video data um, and we have that initialized as an empty array so when they click start recording it calls the get stream method so let's go to that first so get stream we have it as an asynchronous function so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have a try catch block and inside of the try block we're going to set and initialize the stream and we're going to call the navigator dot get media devices dot get display media and we're going to pass in our op our display options now the get display media function uh, will grab basically is the function that will grab your computer screen now this only right currently is available on desktop so you cannot use this application to screen record on Android or iOS yet but they are working on it and eventually you will so currently this is only for desktop support so we're gonna call a wait mm -hmm. so uh, we're gonna wait for that display media to come back and now we have the stream the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna actually set the media recorder so we're doing this we're gonna uh, inst initialize and instantiate a new instance of the media recorder class which is standard in the web and this is how you record video audio what have you 
So we're gonna, it takes in a stream and it takes in options. So we're gonna pass in the stream. In this case, we're streaming from the uh, display and you could have a stream come from the video, could come from another remote stream and this is all WebRTC. And if you've seen any of my other WebRTC videos, some of this may look familiar. So we're gonna pass in the stream and we're gonna pass in the options. And then we're gonna set the on data available event. This event it will be called once we are done, um, once we are done handling and recording our uh, screen capture. So after we set that event handler, we're gonna call the start function on our media recorder. And then we're gonna set is recording to true. So now is recording is set to true, the buttons flip and now it says stop screen recording instead of start screen recording because of the VF condition. So let's go to the on to handle data available event, which will happen, which will be called when we stop the screen recording. So if the event size data, if it's more than zero, if it's more than zero bytes, then we want to take all that event data and push it into our recorded chunks array. So this data is going to be raw, uh, you know, binary data, what have you. We're going to push it into the array. We're going to set the recording back to false. And then we're going to call our download function. And the download function, the first thing that it does is creates a new blob and we're gonna pass into the blob these recorded chunks that we just created. So now we have this, and we're gonna give it a type of video WebM. So now we have this video object that the data that's in it is our screen capture. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new, UR, a new object URL from our blob, calling the url.createObjectURL function. And then we pass in the blob. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a anchor tag we're going to append that anchor tag to the HTML body we're going to make it invisible by setting the display to none we're going to set the uh, reference tag to the URL that we just created we're going to create uh, a date string to show the time that it, that it was recorded and we're going to set uh, that equal to the name of the file basically so we're gonna call a.download, so calling the download method, uh, making the download set equal to the name of the file stream. And then um, we're going to click on that anchor tag and it'll start the download. Once that download has been downloaded, we're going to remove the object uh, URL so it's empty we're going to set the recorded chunks back to an empty array so we can start recording again and then we're gonna call the show notification function so I wrote in that we was gonna show a notification when it's done uh, the first thing on the mounted method is that we want to request permission to show notifications once that's done and the user accepts the notification we can start sending them notifications so in my show notification function we set the badge I have it just set to my logo I set some text here in this case I just put um, if you enjoyed this product consider donating and then I'm using the service worker because I like I said this is a PWA and I did create a service worker so I get the registration of the service worker and then I show a notification from the service worker. And the reason why I do this, instead of just regularly calling the notification from the front end, is because when you use the service worker, you can add actions to your push notification. So I have the body, I have the icon, I require interaction, which means that the notification will be sticky on the screen until the user clicks out of it. And then I give them these actions. I give them a donate action, and then I give them a close action. And if you click donate, it'll take you to my cash app. And if you hit close, it'll just exit out the notification. 
And then lastly, if you click the stop stream recording, stop screen recording, it calls the stop stream method, which simply just calls this media recorder dot stop. Um, and that's all for the app dot view. Now let's look at the service worker. So I used the PWA Builder website to create this service worker. And the only thing I added at the bottom was the self dot add event listener notification click. So it switches between the event dot actions. If the case is donate, then I make my URL to my cash app and then I open up a new window to the cash app. If it's closed, then I just close the notification. Simple, simple, simple. I have my manifest.json here, which has all of my information uh, needed to make a PWA. And then in the index.html, I added some open graph data. So it shows what I wanted to show on social media when I share it. And then I also have my JSON LD uh, data here so I can get rich snippets. And then at the bottom, uh, I have this JavaScript module that basically installs the um, service worker. And once again, all this code right here came from uh, PWA Builder, which I use all the time to build my PWAs. If you just head over to pwabuilder.com slash generate, you can d build your whole PWA service worker manifest and all and just copy it over into your application. But if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe. Um, if you want me to add any features and would like to see that implemented, please let me know. Otherwise, this has been Jerome Parker, and uh, I'll see you all later.